um, to kick the second part of the meetup up, I just quickly want to have a look at the, who looked at the change log recently? <laughs> Only one? Come on, Margin, come on. <laughs> um, so yeah, there are, were some changes and uh, that I just want to quickly share. So OAuth changes were there. And then when you scroll down here, you see a lot of webhook stuff. And this is just something I want to quickly share. Because usually when you want to connect services, you have the problem that the payloads are not really compatible, which then means that you have to bring a function as a service or something in the middle. And you can now create webhooks. And we have this, I'm actually really excited about that because I can now connect Contentful with Igolia without something in the middle. I think that's really cool. And you can define what the webhook payload looks like with a little bit of syntax sugar like this. And then you can finally connect different services like triggering a build without something in the middle or Slack or whatever. And yeah, I think that's really cool. So developers, change log. And I want to talk about Markdown. So who's using Contentful every day? Who has used Contentful? <laughs> All right. So, Markdown, my friends, we have to talk. Let me quickly introduce myself. I work in the developer relations team, which means that I write blog posts and speak in front of people for a living. And I did front-end development for quite a while, and I'm responsible for these sites. So these are small businesses here around, and what does these sites have in common? They are built with this. So what you see there is a Visivic editor, right? Which looks like this for the editors, and then you can switch to the markdown view. And I don't know if you noticed that, this is what I run with non-technical people. Didn't break so far. So, but now, a little bit later, or years later, I understood that this is basically asking for trouble. Because developers don't want to or feel bad setting this up, because this really breaks all the time. And when you have something like this in production with non-technical people, this happens, right? Someone gets onto the phone at a time that is not convenient. In a moment where you're in bed, maybe you were out with your friends the um, night before, or you're at the airport, true solely, showing the felt going to um, London, I'm giving a talk, I had 30 minutes in between and I fixed a WordPress installation. Jackpot. And the message that you get when, when you're on the phone with your customers is then usually everything is broken because a closing HTML tag is lost somewhere. And the problem with these editors is this, for example, when you, you have the possibilities to um, give images, for example, or everything, some, some uh, formatting data, right? So what you see there is that this is representation of the data. This makes, um, uh, with this you're losing uh, reusability. And when you have then HTML in your database, you have this problem, right? Works fine for the browser landscape, but doesn't work on your iOS device, on your Android device, or on my fridge at home. So this has a few downsides. The Visivic editor, which stands for what you see is what you get, right? Is too flexible. It mixes content and looks, it's way too easy to mess up, and HTML is the goal. What we as developers want is we want to limit the user, right? Less functionality, but defined functionality is better functionality. Which then brought us to Markdown, which is a first class citizen in Contentful. So in case you're not familiar with Markdown, this is how it looks like, right? You can define headings, bold, italics, lists, links, images, which then looks like this. And a little downside there already, you can bring HTML into this, right? When you bring this into your, your markdown, well, then you cannot port the content somewhere else anymore. And I was reading a little bit about markdown and the key goal, design goal of markdown is readability. And then there's the question for who actually? Because developers like that, right? It's not that bad. But when you talk to content editors, it's like, pfft, what are all these square brackets here? And why do I have to use that? And that's really, really confusing. And then try to explain a 
an editor why there is no underline in Markdown and try to explain what semantic markup is and that we should structure um, our content and give it the right meanings. That's not really working. But let's just roll with Markdown for a minute. So you can build a site that has a heading and a paragraph and you add an image, right? The first problem that you have now is how do you do responsive images? All right, that, that's actually not too bad yet. So I'm, I'm also a JavaScript person and a quite popular Markdown parser is marked. And then you can define a renderer there and then you're hooking into this renderer and you define your image sizes because you don't want to um, serve huge images to small clients, right? And our assets API with this you can resize. All right, so you have then solve the first problem. So you go on with your life, content grows. Now you have a video. A video is not actually in Markdown. So we apply the video hack, right? So you have this image element because you're using an image element now and you check for the URL that is in there. If it's in a video format actually. That's not pretty, but it works. So you go on. Now you've got a video in your, in your blog post or on your Jägermeister site. And now you have a graph. You have a second graph. And then has anybody, anybody, anybody seen the recent additions to Wikipedia that you can hover stuff and there's meta information about the link? Now you have this. Markdown is not made for complex use cases. That's just how it is. Um, one advantage of Markdown is that it has limited functionality, that it focuses on semantics, and that it's relatively easy to grasp, at least for technical people. Downsides are that it has limited functionality. It's not powerful, powerful enough that editors don't like it and that HTML is allowed. So, and as we're here at the Contentful Meetup, how would you solve this with Contentful? And we uh, recommend this kind of structure. We talk about topics and assemblies. Basically, these are two different types of content, two different types of content types. And one, um, so you have topics that are pure data, let's say a car with all the information about a car. Excuse me. And then you have assemblies that you um, use to compose all the real data points with some uh, information you need for layout or something like this. Which means that when you have this now, this is what you end up with, like a lot of content types assembled to each other. And this could then look like this. So you've got a page and you've got a lot of references to tiny, tiny data points. Which means that you're nesting the editor really quickly. And what about this one? Let's, let's ignore that for a moment. So and this is then the, um, the response that you get. And when you're doing front end and you're developing in a component approach, this maps excellent to React components. This is actually really, really nice. So even if it's not that pretty, as I heard, structured data is perfect for a component-driven approach. And I uh, wrote about that and I gave a talk about that, if you're interested. So now we have the developer crowd out there and they saw the same problems with Markdown. And especially the React community is, something, is doing something really interesting recently. Has anyone heard of MDX? So basically MD MDX is Markdown plus JSX bringing the world of components to Markdown. Good idea, we will see. Basically it looks like this. So you can basically import components in your Markdown files and then use these elements in Markdown. When I look at this, what comes to my mind immediately is technical documentation, right? I wrote style guides for years where the comments were parsed and were put out into a style guide thing. I think this is a way, way cleaner approach because this way you can reuse the components and leave documentation out of your, for example, um, JavaScript, like extensive documentation out of your JavaScript or CSS code. And does anyone know Reveal.js? That's, that's the thing developers do. Um, who think that presentations should be done with web technology. I never liked that because it's really tedious to 
two beautiful slides. There's now MDIDX deck, which I think is really cool because you can use Markdown and components. So you have kind of some functionality in your slide deck. I think that's nice. And as you may have noticed, I like transitions and all these kind of things. It also supports stuff like highlights and all in code. So you can use this to do your pres presentation if this is your jam. So here in the moment, yeah, I like that. that that's just cool. So if you like this, so this is reveal JS on stereos. First question when I'm talking about MDX deck, are these slides done with MDX deck? No. Because Keynote has magic move, which just means you have two slides and you press a button and it, everything just flies automatically. But could this work in Contentful MDX? So let's see. So what I did is, um, let me do, Um, this. So what you see here is the same page, the same example. So it's big enough. And what you see here is a UI extension. So basically Contentful allows you to upload um, code, which then runs in an iframe. And what you see here is that I can import stuff and that I can use Markdown. And for example, let's change this one. It's this one. So what I have here is that I have a, a graph, a video, another graph, and a tooltip with a duck. I think that's really, really nice. Um, how does that actually work? Um, has anyone heard from, of Code Sandbox? That is a very new um, online editor done by, uh, by Flick. He is a student from the Netherlands. And he builds this thing, you will see it later, which is, it's way better than all the other editors out there. And while he's relatively young, he open source social components. So when you need a, a JavaScript a dependency resolution running in the browser, when you need a, a working React editor, you can just use it. Even if it's written there, don't use it yet. So what you just saw is that inside of Contentful, I could just fetch dependencies from NPM they were resolved and I could use MDX inside of Contentful. Some people that use Contentful for a little bit now would say, that's not a good idea. Because now you have JSX or in this case React um, in your content, which means that you cannot port this content elsewhere. Which is in theory, you could render JSX on different platforms, but all the people I talked to um, said that it's really painful. So MDX at the end is, I think that's super nice. It's just cool. Making docu uh, technical documentation with that is super nice. But editors, there's no way that you can convince a content person to put an import statement on top of their content block. That's just not going to happen. So MDX actually <laughs> is the other, is that, that there's a thumbs up actually. Okay, so devs will love it. It's perfect for documentation and it's component based. So and the downside is it's easy to mess up. I mean, we probably can all deal with an exception. A content person cannot deal with a stack trace in JavaScript. It's not made for publishing. It needs file access, right? This becomes powerful when you can access the files next to the MDX file and it breaks portability easily. So it's not clean for Contentful, it's not dirty either. Yeah, so my opinion about this right now is that I think that it's really, really cool, but it's maybe not the best use case for Contentful. Um, right now people are playing around with Gatsby and MDX and Contentful, um, that's why I came into play, so we built this so they can use this in Gatsby. But the fact that you cannot use local files, uh, I don't want to hack that together. So we have Markdown and MDX from the React community, and they both, both support this, right? This is a link. And this has a big, big, big problem here. So what you see here is a hard-coded value, right? So when we now think of our Wikipedia duck, right? This has to have a connection 
to some data that is somewhere else. And here's also a border around this and there too. And then you have another article that needs the same data and the same data. When you hard code this, even when you fetch it later, th that is not gonna work. So when you want to achieve this uh, with hard coded values, you will just fail. So I took a step back, back to square one. So this was the approach we had first. So we had different items here that um, are connected to different uh, content entries in Contentful. And we have to adjust the beam on Martin. Um, these could be in content types, right? This makes sense. A chart with uh, tabular data or a video or something. This kind of makes sense. But here we have headings and paragraphs and having these in the content type, maybe not so much. So what we thought is, Maybe we should unify the whole thing and use content entries and types only for complex data structures. Which brings me to structured text, which is currently an alpha feature and this is what I wanna show you. Cool. So what you see here is a page that is set up in Contentful and it has this new editor here. Is that big enough? And I have here code sandbox. And this right now is just, if you're not familiar with um, React, so this has one uh, React component. It creates a contentful client. It fetches this one entry, which is this one. And then it, I didn't publish that, so. Then it has this body field here, which then has a content property. This, this is fairly new. And this content property um, includes several items that then will be rendered in a different um, function here. And what we have here is, um, it just calls a few render functions. So let's start just playing around with this. So, and say this is a first paragraph. All right. So and what I do on the right side in the console log, you see what is actually um, rendered by this render item function. So you see that there is one element that is a paragraph and this has um, content inside of it, which are then different text nodes. So what we respond now is a tree of components that are based or a tree of nodes that are based on this. And that you see that here, all right, this includes text node which then will be rendered here. And here we have the actual string, which, we're, which will go here, right? So now I answered this Stack Overflow question. We supported underline. <laughs> so let's, let's do this. So which now is we have here a text node and here we see that there is a marks property and here we see that it's underline, but so far, this doesn't have much benefit, right? So let's go for a heading. All right. And let's refresh that. Cool. And as you see here, here are the different render functions. So this is React and I'm mapping just different on the node type and returning different um, uh, React code. And here you see the stuff that is just responsible for the H1. All right, so far so good. This is what you could do with Markdown 2, right? So let's go on and let's import our first chart. This is where you would have now uh, in the old model, a reference field and um, basically it's kind of working the same. So you can edit the chart now. I was a little bit lazy here and I'm just going with JSON data. But basically now you have an inline reference in this editor, which means that you can move everything by uh, which you ha had to nest deeply down earlier into this one thing. So now we can go here and let's re-render this. So now we have a chart here. So let's see what the response data looked like. So we, we had initially a paragraph. All right, here we have the heading, cool. And then we have this embedded entry block. Cool, this is the one that I just added. So structured data inside of this editor. And then we can have a look. This now has a data property and here you see the normal contentful responses, right? Which then means that the component for the chart for me is just doing like 
like this, and I'm just passing it down. So again, this is now a, like this. This one? Can I go away here? Is that better? <laughs> so basically, this is then just a mapping. This component knows how to deal with this content type, right? So, and using something like this, I can now do everything I want without having the need to split my content model into several things, right? So let's just add a video here, sweet, and another paragraph, and the other chart. So we can publish this. And this is basically a flow that editors more or less will understand, right? When you say, hey, you have different fields and you connect this with this and this, and the API will give you everything at once, editors are like, I don't get that. But here we have a structure and this also works then. So I think this is a huge improvement already. So when we now refresh this, we hopefully have everything. So here we have our ducks, nice, and another paragraph. Cool. So let's go back. So this is a new structured text editor, which I think Markdown will have its um, place, but I think overall this is a nicer solution. And writing me, so I, this demo, I wrote this today before going to work. So making this mapping from the note types that you get out of this um, to your component or to your templates, really it's just going recursively over the tree that you get back. If you are serving HTML, we will provide serializers for all the common languages which is cool. Um, when you want to do React, HTML is not your first choice. And this is why I had to write this um, myself. Um, we're currently discussing if we want to support a serializer for, for VDOM or something. So most important thing, it supports underline. You have a visual interface, you will have fewer content types. A content type for a heading or a headline is just not needed anymore, which I think is really, really nice. Also, when you hard code links to content types inside of your markdown, you have no idea if you have incoming connections from somewhere else to this thing. If you have a page with a slug and something is linking to this, um, with this editor, there are real connection, which then means that in the uh, Contentful web app, you see on the right side, okay, there are incoming links. This gives you a lot of safety when editors are working. So you can also go just open another editor's uh, entry and edit them inline and you're staying in a JSON format, right? Not like an MDX where you're breaking everything. Does that mean that you now can say, yeah, we have one editor and that's it? You will still have to compose things and think about your content model. So this will still be a thing. And proper content modeling stays important. And it's really, really hard and you have to get better at it over time um, to serve your product needs. So the final question is then, so what about the hover duck? Will that work in Contentful? It will be finished in this sprint, but <laughs> it was not done today. So we will have inline references, which means that this will be possible in line to link to things. And then it's just up to you how you render this. I then have in my React um, access to this thing which brings a lot of new possibilities. This was not possible before. And I read Wikipedia. Did you know that the duck, the species duck includes swans and geese? I, I didn't know that. So if you want to join the alpha, you can talk to me um, later today and I will enable it for your organization and spaces in the upcoming days. And that's it.